Hey guys, come on in. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Come on in. We're a few minutes early. I'm not going to keep you too long. I just wanted to talk about some hot topics. I want to talk about the RHOP reunion looks because I have so much to say about that. So come on in the room. Make sure to smash that like button when you come on in the room. Show me that you're in here. Show some love. Come on in. Come on in. Hey, guys. How are you? How's everybody doing tonight? I'm happy to see y'all. It feels good to be back. Yes. Hey, y'all. Come on in. Come on in. We are right on time. Oh, you, ooh, you have a crab tray? I know that's right. My mouth is watering just thinking about that. That sounds really good. <laughs> Come on in, guys. Come on in. Come on in. We are going to be talking about the RHOP reunion looks. I'm excited. Y'all, make sure to smash that like button when you come in the room. Come on in. Show me some love. Show me that you're in here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, honey, they are fresh. Got them freshly done on Monday. We are feeling good. Yes, yes, yes. I... Got, I have so many thoughts about the Quiet on Set documentary that's on HBO Max. I've only seen the first two episodes. I was actually watching it prior to the live. But um, it is to say that Dan Schneider needs to be in jail. He needs to be under the jail immediately. That man is a predator and what he did to everybody on that set. I'm scared to continue watching the last two episodes. But y'all, let's come on in the room. So... We have 63 people in here. Let me tell y'all, Potomac did that. Can everybody give me a thumbs up if these are not Potomac's best looks? Everybody looks great. Even Giselle, even though her dress is, I guess, the most basic out of all of them, she looks good. Andy was not lying when he said that it was their best reunion looks to date. I think that Karen stole the show. Karen, that quaffed hair, it off. Oh, Karen did that. Yes, yeah, they, those are their best looks to date. I think that the all black is flawless. I mean, I know that a lot of you guys were saying that Ashley's look looked basic, but I don't think so. I think that Ashley, I think that that's Ashley's best look because y'all, Ashley always looks very tacky and uh, just a hot mess. So you cannot be too mad at her. I think that Ashley did a, that's a job well done. I never thought that Ashley would get it together, but that that's her best look. Yeah, Karen ate down, even Mia. And Mia is good and tacky and Mia's dress looks amazing. I thought that she looked beautiful. I was just here for it. I said, okay, Kierna's look is gorgeous. Guys, I think that Kierna might be asked to be full-time next season. I think that she's one of the best friends of that Potomac has seen in a long time. I think that Kierna has the whole package. She's fun. She's lively, great personality. She looks good, has her own business. She's doing well. And she doesn't put up with mess from anybody. The fact that she wore Miss Deborah out... <laughs> Okay, so we're saying that, oh, some of y'all didn't like, y'all didn't love Wendy's look. I thought that Wendy's look, I thought she looked good. I love the gown. Listen, I think that they all looked good. I don't, I don't think that there was a bad look because when you think about the prior reunions, a lot of the dresses were a miss, but you have to give people their props. Everybody, in my opinion, looked good. Karen, in my opinion, stole the show because that look is flawless. One of y'all said Karen is mother because that outfit gave mother energy. She she ate that. Eight. I agree. Kierna does need to replace Wendy. Uh, not Wendy. She needs to replace um uh she needs to replace Robin and Ashley and Neca. That's who Kieran needs, needs to replace half of the cast. I think Wendy should have done an updo or removed the necklace. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I loved it. I, I mean, personally, I think that Wendy looked good. I liked it. I think that the hair was perfect for it. Um, 
was the look, I guess Wendy's used to giving us very extravagant, like in your face looks. And I think that she wanted to be a bit more demure, giving us old Hollywood glam. I, I think that she looks good. I think that the jewelry was just right. The hair was just right. I think that they, they all look good, y'all. I don't have any critiques for any of the women. I think that these are their best reunion looks. I think that these are these are actually one of the best reunion looks I've seen across any franchise of all time. And when I tell y'all I am counting down the days until Potomac is over because I am tired of this, I think that it's really sad that there's so much drama, not only on the cast, but amongst the viewers. We can't just watch the show and have some fun. And it's really sad. It's sad that we can't just enjoy the show. The show has been forever changed since season five. And I know I keep saying the same thing, but it's just really, it's just, it's just sad. Now, wait a second. How do we have 145 people in the chat and only 62 likes? The math ain't mathin'. I'm gonna need y'all to, you know, like, like the video. Let's boost it up in the algorithm. Yeah, I'm happy that Potomac is coming to an end. I am too. Now, I want to ask you guys, remember how um, they kept teasing the photo shoot, Mia's photo shoot, all throughout the, um, the trailer? They kept showing it, right? I do not understand why they cut it out. I think that we should have seen that in this last episode and they should have saved the fashion show for the finale, in my opinion. Also, does anybody remember Karen's triple 20 party being teased in the trailer? Where is that? They cut that whole thing out. I'm getting annoyed with production, teasing us with these different scenes and then we're not seeing that. Remember in season six when we were supposed to see them do the Telfar collaboration and they cut that out? I'm getting tired of that. Stop teasing these really cool collabs and now we don't see it. That would have been really fun. They're cutting out the wrong stuff and leaving in stuff that we don't care about. Yeah, it's very grating. It's I was looking forward to seeing Karen's party. Karen looks so good in the um in the trailer. And I'm like, so we're not going to see her birthday? She's been talking about her birthday, the triple 20 for the whole entire season and now we're not seeing that? That would have been a great scene. I don't know. Yeah, get rid of the producers. That's all that we can say. Get rid of the producers because nothing is changing. Yeah, I think that production is cutting out important scenes. They are. They really are. And I'm I'm just really upset that we didn't get to see two major events. I think that they spent way too much time on the whole Wendy and NECA stuff. That went on for like 13, 14 episodes. So that way, when we got to the, the trip to the DR, we couldn't even get the we, we couldn't even get uh Karen's party or the photo shoot. I think that they should have had the the fashion show, the GNA fashion show. That should have been the finale episode, in my personal opinion. I don't know. I don't know. Production, yeah, production is trash. They cut out Kenya's soft launch. Yeah, her hair salon for Atlanta. I don't understand that. And then it really makes us feel like if you're cutting out the important stuff and leaving in this trivial things, the trivial stuff that doesn't make any sense, it leads me to believe that you guys have favorites and you're purposely cutting out certain scenes of certain people. Because I do not understand why we focus so much on stupidity, but we are getting... Um, we're not getting main scenes that were teased in the trailer. It makes no sense. Yeah, the DR trip was very lackluster. I agree. It wasn't giving that much. I mean, it was cute. The first day was cute, but that's about it. I feel like the trip was dull. We didn't need three and a half episodes of the DR trip. We damn sure did not need five episodes of the Austin trip. The Austin trip took up too much time. They should have that should have, the Austin trip should have been a two episode thing, and that should have been that. But to have it five episodes, that went from episode four to episode nine. That's unacceptable. So it clearly shows that somebody, for some reason, wanted to showcase all the mess between NECA and Wendy, because that makes no sense. That, that trip could have gotten scrapped. We didn't need that. And that trip wasn't even giving. It wasn't luxurious. It wasn't a sexy trip. They were doing chicken shit bingo. Um, 
you know, <laughs> Ashley had them at a hotel that was facing construction. There wasn't a nice view. It's just like, what's going on? <laughs> I don't know, y'all. I'm just, I'm tired of Potomac. May I also say something? I'm so happy that all these shows are going off because I do not ever want Bravo to ever put five shows on at the same time. I am thrilled that all these shows are off. I said, thank you, Jesus. Won't he do it? <laughs> and I'm buying myself um, in honor of the Real Housewives of Potomac, the uh, when it's the last reunion episode when we're done with Potomac, I'm popping open the biggest bottle of champagne. So I hope you guys are ready because in that recap, I'm like, we're done. We're good. <laughs> I was loving it. it. Gave me something to watch. They told us this was going to be a proper season. It was not. It sure was not. Mm -mm. Yeah, I think that NECA is going to be going home. I think that NECA gave us absolutely nothing. I think she really got off on the wrong foot. I think you always lose. And she's similar to Anna Marie on Beverly Hills where Anna Marie came on trying to be Kyle's mouthpiece and that backfired. I think had Anna Marie shown her real story, she would have fared better. Hey, Latin 2436, thank you for the super chat. Hey, Brooke, love the braids. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you. But yeah, y'all, I think that NECA did herself a disservice. I think had she come in with sharing that she wanted to have a child and she was concerned about her fertility and she was starting off with her champagne line, well, she was launching her champagne line, she would have fared better. But she gave us no fashions, those unflattering two-piece sets, um, a dry personality, the way she talks to her husband. And then on top of that, she's lying on Wendy, saying that Wendy, you know, Wendy's mom did X, Y, and Z in the shrine. And it's that was the wrong road. She She went down the wrong road. In the words of Portia, I met Giselle. She was surprisingly awesome at BravoCon. I met I met Giselle at the at 2022's BravoCon. Her and Robin were pleasant. That was when season six had just ended, and season seven was starting. And she was cordial. She was very cordial. But at this year, at this last BravoCon, her and Robin saw me, and they said, "Shout out to everybody. They have fun." <laughs> Hey, Deanna Fordson, thank you for the super chat. What do you think about Candace's comments about not wanting light-skinned kids? Well, first off, thank you for the super chat, Deanna. I appreciate that. Let me say, I saw all that on Twitter and I am going to just, this is my opinion. I didn't feel, I wasn't in an uproar because I knew what she was trying to say. She wasn't saying she doesn't want light-skinned kids because she doesn't like light-skinned people. She was saying, I just want my kids to look like me. That's what she was saying. She wants her kids to have some melanin. That's what she meant. It wasn't meant to say, oh, I don't want light-skinned kids because they're gonna be light. It was, well, I just want my kids to have some melanin. I hope that they're brown. That's what she meant. Do I think that she needed to say that? No, it's like kitchen table talk, but she didn't mean it with any malice. That's how I took it. I wasn't up in arms about it because I knew what she was trying to say, but I don't think that you need to say everything that comes to your head. Now, obviously, if you don't like Candace, you are going to be, you know, oh, how dare she? That's a nasty thing to say, but she wasn't saying it in a derogatory way. It was just that my kids will be biracial and I do want my kids to have some melanin. She wants them to be brown. That's all she was saying. It wasn't meant to be derogatory or evil. So that's how I stand on it. But no, I, I knew what she meant, but I was like, Candace, I wouldn't have said that out loud. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Mel Penn, thank you for the super chat. When Ashley became an honorary member of the GEBs, she became uninteresting and, uh, and eventually so will Mia and so is NECA. Yes, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I think that Ashley's downfall was trying to run behind them, but I think that Ashley's time is up. I think that Ashley has run out of tricks. And also when you think about 
after the reunion, did you guys see that Instagram live video that she did where she said that it was a hard year for her? And we've never seen that energy come from Ashley before, before, after a reunion. So I think that Ashley's a bit shook because she knows that this was most likely her last reunion and her last hurrah and her last Bravo check. But I think that Mia is desperate and Mia's going to do anything to drive a storyline. So I won't be surprised if Bravo does keep Mia until season 10. Now, NECA, I think that NECA is going to be a one and done. I just want to make sure, okay, I, I just want to make sure I didn't skip anybody. Hey, Adam Boggs McDonald, thank you for the super chat. Brooke, I'm back. Hey, what do you think is going to happen for RHOP and Beverly Hills casting next season? Because they're both a raggedy mess, both a raggedy mess. Neck brace got to go. Um, I think that for Potomac, Bravo has to make some changes. So I do foresee some cast changes being made. I think that some people that some folks think are never going to be fired or demoted. I think that we're going to see some new faces. I think that I wouldn't be surprised if Robin is gone. I won't be surprised if Ashley is gone. I see NECA being gone. And then I see maybe Kierna bring, being on and then maybe a new one or two new faces. But there's going to be a shakeup. I also won't be surprised if Giselle is willing to play with the other castmates, see Candace and Wendy, because... I think that Bravo is going to put the fire under her and say, look, this shows this show can't move forward. So unless you want to be out of a job, you're going to need to be OK and talk to your fellow castmates. So I think that that's going to happen for Beverly Hills. I won't be surprised if they keep everybody and just fire Anna Marie. Hey, Mel, did I miss a, I don't want to miss anybody. Hey, Mel Penn. Thank you for the super chat. What Candace was trying to say as a dark skinned black woman with type 4C hair, raising a mixed race child is going to have added challenges. Yes, that's what she was trying to say. That was the point of what she was trying to say, but people took it out of context and they only saw that one little clip. And then again, people who don't like Candace, they're going to run with, oh, you know, she was being hateful and that's not what she was trying to say. But thank you for the super chat, Mel Penn. And thank you. That was a great point. Hey, Ace E, thank you for the super chat. Do you think Mia is getting the Porsche favorable treatment, setting her up to be one of the anchors? If so, thoughts? Um, That's a great question. I definitely feel like looking at this season with Andy making her first chair at this reunion, That's that says a lot. That's a big jump. The last two reunions, Mia was at the end of the couch. I think that with the mate, the way Mia is working so hard to drive the storylines and she's able to talk to everybody, she moves around from group to group. I wouldn't be surprised if Bravo is trying to set it up that Mia is now maybe not one of the anchors, but maybe she'll be considered one of the top girls. I don't know. I don't I don't ever see Mia as an anchor of the show. I think that she'll always be one of those housewives who does a great job. She shows up to work. Like she reminds me of a Dorinda from New York. Where Dorinda, I don't consider Dorinda an anchor because she came in too late at season seven, but I consider Dorinda as like a staple. I could see Mia as a staple but not an anchor. Does that make sense? But great question and thank you so much for the super chat. Hey, Kelly Green Gables, thank you for the super chat. Unpopular opinions on RHOP or other housewives. Um, my unpopular opinions, um, I don't think I have any unpopular opinions about Potomac. For other franchises, I guess maybe with Miami this season, there were certain things that took place, and I said it in my finale episode, but um, I felt like Gertie kind of dragged out that fight between her and Larsa in the finale episode. That was maybe my unpopular opinion regarding all the Housewives franchises for this year. Yes, I agree. I think that Mia is just an okay housewife. Um, I don't think that Mia is an exceptional housewife. I think that she's just okay. She's just too desperate to 
get a check. Like the desperation oozes out of Mia. I think the fact that Mia could never be an anchor for me is the fact that she lies so much. I, I, I can't trust what you say. And that's that's that hinders her ability to be um, uh, an anchor, in my opinion. I, I don't think that Mia has what it takes to be an anchor. A staple, yes, but not an anchor. Yeah, she's she's very desperate. She's very desperate. Um, no, I don't have any tea on the reunion. I wish I did. Um, well, you know what? If I did have tea on the Potomac reunion, I couldn't even tell you. I, I wouldn't be allowed to tell you guys. That's the that's the thing about it. Like if I do when I do get tea, I'm, I'm not even allowed to tell y'all. So no, but in all seriousness, though, I actually don't have any tea or firsthand knowledge. I didn't hear anything about the reunion. So I'm going to be just as surprised as you guys are. But if I do find something out, I'll do this. Like, you know, when I get tea and I'll give you a wink in the video, I'll do that. All right. So look out for a wink if I do hear anything. I think that all the husbands showed up to, Pot to the Potomac reunion. And Andy hinted that um, Gordon and Mia stole the show. So I'm like, OK, I guess we're, we're going to be tuned in for that. Now, since we are on the topic of Potomac and the reunion looks, I do want to say prayers up to Karen Huger. I don't know if you guys know, but Karen Huger was in a horrible car crash. And um, I, I have the link. I put the link up on my community tab uh, about the article. And I want to read. She actually did an update. She released a statement um, a few hours ago. Karen Huger tells TMZ, thank you all for your prayers and well wishes during this very frightening experience. I'm still in shock from last night's incident, but grateful to be alive today. With the passing of my beloved mother, grief comes and goes in waves. And with Mother's Day approaching, it has felt more like a, a tsunami. She goes on to say that last night she met up with a girlfriend for dinner. They talked and brought up some very emotionally sensitive topics. I was crying on my way home and saw a car, and saw a car heading right for me. I swerved to avoid the head-on collision, hit the divider, and then a tree. I'm hurt, bruised up a bit, but so grateful that I am alive. I did receive citations, one of which was unrelated to the incident, which is understandable. But what was most what was most surprising is that the car that almost hit me just drove away. So that's Karen's statement. Baby, I am praying for her. I hope that she is fine. I hope that she takes some time to just rest. That must be very scary. And thank God that she's alive. That's frightening. Car, a car, car accidents are scary as hell. Scary as hell. And the fact that that happened to her late at night, I mean, and then a car drove into her and she hit the median. Thank God that nothing happened to her. Thank, I know I, I, if you read the article when it first dropped a few hours ago, um, you saw that her car is completely totaled. Can't even drive the car anymore. But that's a small price to pay that she still has her life and she's still here. But um, I hope that the person who hit her, I hope that they found that they find them and that they're that they're in jail. Because how dare you? You almost kill somebody, ran them off the road, and then you have the nerve to just drive off. And can't you can go to jail for um, a hit and run, right? If you run off at the scene of a crime, you can go to jail. You had a hit and run. Yeah, it's very scary. I'm, I'm glad that you're okay. I'm thankful that you're here. It's very scary. Yeah, car accidents are very traumatizing. Very. Especially on a highway. Mm-mm. Yeah, car, yeah, they're no joke. You would be surprised how many people drive off. Yeah, you know what? You're right. People are nuts. And especially if somebody's driving and they don't have car insurance. But yeah, guys, prayers up for Karen. I hope that she's well. And I hope that all the women are rallying around her because that's what she needs right now. And um, yeah, that's very sad. I saw that people were trying to jump to conclusions about what they thought happened. And I was like, let's just, let's all wait and see. Let's not jump to conclusions. And I'm glad that she released a statement because I'm sure that she was hearing the chatter of what people thought happened. And you already know that a lot of the women, i.e. the Green Eyed Bandits, are going to end up trying to use this as their storyline, trying to bother Karen about what they think happened with this accident. Oh, I have the um, 
I recorded my Married to Medicine recap. I did all the parts. But um, that will be up. If it's not up tomorrow, it will probably be up Friday. But I have that. I talked about what I thought about Apollo. I talked about it all. Okay. Um, honestly, I need for Andy to move away from three-part reunions. We don't need a three-part reunion for everything. This season of Married to Medicine was so lackluster. It was a waste of time to have three parts. Oh, yes, I saw that. Marcus Jordan and Larsa broke up. Child, I mean, who thought that that relationship was going to last? Nobody. Nobody surprised. Nobody is surprised in the least. And she did all that talk saying, oh, my gosh, Marcus Jordan's mom loves me. And girl, Juanita was just counting down the days till you guys broke up. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Most reunions do not need three parts. Yeah, they don't. I think that Beverly Hills needed one part. Kyle, the, y if y'all could have seen how angry I was that Kyle played in our faces like that in that last part, I don't believe a word that came out of her mouth. I think that her and Morgan are in a full-blown relationship and she's going to just play in our faces and try to save this and drag this whole thing out for season 14. But if I were Andy, I would have fired her right on the spot because you have your sister here who brings absolutely nothing. And now you want to sit up here and lie to me and give me these crazy answers with you talking in circles. I don't think so. That was a waste of everybody's time. And Kathy talking about, oh yeah, she left early because she knew that I was going to get her. Who are you? I was done. I was done. Yeah, they could have wrapped up as soon as Garcelle and Sutton left. Yeah, I agree. And um, and Potomac, I feel the same way. Potomac does not need to be three parts. I hope that I hope that Potomac is finished. I hope it's only two parts. But knowing no knowing Bravo, it's going to be three parts. Somebody said I was told that Potomac ends April thirteenth. So. It's going, yeah. So unfortunately, y'all, it is going to be a three-part reunion. <sighs> Very upsetting. <laughs> Tomic is only two. Are you sure? Because um, next week is the finale. Well, in a few days is the finale episode. The twenty-fourth is the finale. Oh, are you? No. And then at the 31st is part one. Um, part two was April 7th. And sorry, I said April 13th. No, it's April 4th. April 14th is the third part. Oh, Bingeworthy said two. Shout out to Bingeworthy. Um, oh, okay. Well, it's only two. Yay! Unless they, sk they skip Easter Sunday. Well, listen, y'all, I'm praying that it is two parts. I really hope so. I hope so. I think they're skipping Easter Sunday. Okay, well, that's good then. That's good to know. All right, well, maybe it is only two parts then. This is great news. I'm happy. You guys made my day with that. I'm really happy to hear that because I did not want to suffer through three parts. We don't need three parts. Nothing happened in Potomac. It was a waste of our time. It needs to be 30 minutes. It needs to be in the clubhouse if I'm <laughs> This reunion needs to be in the in the in the Watch What Happens Live clubhouse, <laughs> like how he did um, for Miami in the earlier seasons, because <laughs> nobody was watching. But I really believe in my soul that Potomac will be seeing some major changes. Did you guys see the ratings for the last few episodes? The ratings were low. The ratings are dropping like flies, and. I think that we will see some new people. I will not be surprised if at least two or more people get the pink slip. And the way they set it up with Ashley on the DR trip, when they showed that montage of her, I think that is Ashley's last season. I think so. I really do. And I hope so because I'm tired of Ashley. I've been sick of her since season four. Sick and tired of her. Sick and tired. 
Giselle does need to go, but I do think that they're going to keep her. I think that they I think that they are going to keep her. If anything, I see them firing Robin. They'll let Robin go. Um, I think Ashley's gonna get the pink slip. NECA's going to get the pink slip. If I had to guess, I don't see them keeping NECA around. Um, I think that Robin might get the pink slip. And then they're going to bring on Kierna as full time and then bring in maybe two more other ladies. But Ashley and NECA, for sure, I think that they are going because the fans did not like NECA whatsoever. NECA didn't give us anything. We didn't even see the wealth that she allegedly has. We didn't, we didn't see the glamour. We didn't see any of that. I think that, I yeah, I could see her being penalized for bringing Deborah around because for Deborah to start that fight with Candace, that's ridiculous. That's unacceptable. You can't do that. Your raggedy friend who's not even on the show and she's going to pick a fight with one of the main cast members, that's, no. Where do we do that at? I, I Listen, y'all, the way Ashley was talking on that Instagram story after the reunion, she looked real nervous. That energy coming off the screen, I said, oh, yeah, she's nervous because she won't be back. She won't. She won't. And I hope that she saved her checks because these Bravo checks will not be coming in. And I'll bet you guys $5 that GNA is not even doing anything. Now, you guys told me to go to the site, and they don't even have clothing up on GNA. I said, this is worse than She by Sheree. How is Sheree Whitfield beating you in clothing? <laughs> and you saw that Sheree has upped the prices of her She Buy Sheree clothes. She's trying to sell some hoodie for 385 American dollars. I said, girl, what? <laughs> A mess. A mess. Yeah, y'all, y'all told me. Y'all told me. Ooh. Sorry about that. But yeah, I'm, I'm just cracking up because, honey, GNA is not going to do anything. They're not going to have, they're not going to have any customers. And it's, it's no shade. But that fashion show was a hot mess. The food looked good. They had an open bar. That's nice and all. But the material, I said, oh, no, no ma'am. Mm-mm. The jokes write themselves. They do. Oh, not she, not she in by charade. <laughs> hey, LCM1983. Thank you for the super chat. Just showing love. So happy you are live and love your content, Brooke. Thank you so much. I'm happy that you're here. I hope that you're enjoying. Okay, we got 333 folks in the chat. Yes, show me some love. Hit that like button. Let's boost this live up in the algorithm. Come on, show me some love. Wendy said her and Candace got it the worst. Oh, well, from what I heard, I heard that Wendy and Candace devoured at the reunion. So that's why they were in great spirits when they went out to dinner the night at the um, that night after the reunion had wrapped. So I had heard that Candace and Wendy came out on top as champions. So I'm going to go with that because that's what I choose to believe that my girls brought their A game and had a, a phenomenal reunion. So that's what I'm choosing to believe. I don't believe that. I do not believe for one minute that Wendy and Candace got ate up at that reunion. I don't. Mm -mm. Robin said they had lame props. I mean, okay, okay, so they had some lame props, but from what I heard, I heard that Wendy and Candace did what needed to be done. And that it was the opposite. It was Giselle and Robin looking and feeling stupid. And Neko was looking and feeling stupid from what I heard. And that's all. Well, li listen, Lord, uh, let me just let me knock on wood because I hope that I hope that's the case. Let me not speak too soon. Let me just pray that my girls did what I heard that they did. <laughs> exactly. Who else could eat them up? Exactly. And I mean, say what you want. 
But the fact that I think, what was it? I think it was when Giselle was on Watch What Happens Live, right? When Andy asked her if, she, like, why doesn't she speak to Wendy and Candace or whatever? And she said something to the effect of, well, at the reunion, she has a lot to clear up with them. Call me naive. A few of you guys are right here with me on this theory. But there's a part of me that feels like Giselle is going to try and attempt to broker peace between them. For some reason, I feel like Giselle got a warning that if she does not shape up and speak to them, that she will be under disciplinary action and might not be on the show. I think that that was a strong message to send with her not being first chair at this reunion. I do. I, I For some reason, I feel like if Robin and Giselle are back on this show, they are going to be forced to talk to Wendy and Candace. I don't know. They won't. They don't have to be best friends. They don't have to be, you know, super tight. But in order to move the storylines along and for us to have a cohesive show and a cohesive cast, I will not be surprised if next season we see Giselle and Robin play nice. I'm sure they get tired of the backlash from all the viewers because the show isn't fun to watch. And even I see Giselle and Robin fans admit on Twitter and, uh, and, uh, and on Instagram that they even feel like Giselle is holding the group back. So you know when their fans are saying that, then there's a problem. No, everybody can't be saying the same thing. We're not all crazy. This has nothing to do with not liking somebody. This is about what I'm seeing. We cannot move this show forward if you have people who are trying to ice folks out and get them off the cast. We, it just is not going to work. So I won't be surprised that if Giselle is back on, I think she will be back on. I'm pretty sure she will be. But I will not be surprised if next season we see a 180 and we see her actually playing nice with Candace and Wendy. And you might say that I'm reaching, that's fine, but that's what I, I, I believe it. And a few of y'all feel the same way too. Being second chair must have shook her up. Yeah, I, I think it did. I think it did. It does feel weird because you're so used to seeing her. It's always Karen and Giselle, first chair every single season. Or even if... Karen, no, that's not true because that one season, season six, it was Giselle and Wendy. They were both first chair. Karen was second chair. Now, Karen's spot, she always waffles between first and second, but Giselle has always been first chair. Always, hands down. So I think that that sent a big message that eight seasons in, she's now second. It's like, wait, what? I'm second in command? Like, what's going on? Yes, like Vanderpump and Teresa and um, Kyle on Beverly Hills. No matter what, they have always been first chair, no matter what. Even if they didn't have a storyline that season, they've always been first. And Giselle has always been first. And for her to get second, it's like, wait, like, come again? What? So... You, you listen, guys, just my theory. I'm not saying that I'm 100% right. I'm not saying, you look, I'm just saying that they, everybody knows that this show can't go on and people do want to keep their checks because those are some really nice coins. You're making what? Half a million dollars for only three months of work. You want to give that, you want to give that check up. Giselle has daughters in college, a G wagon, a house that she bought and still fixing up. She needs that check. So if she has to play nice with Candace and Wendy and suck up and say, I'm sorry, she'll do it. Nobody's crazy. Tony, because when American Express is at your door and that mortgage is, and mortgage is at your door, you don't have time to be talking about some, oh, well, you know, I'm going to stand 10 toes down and not talk to them. No, it's like, you know what? I'm sorry about that. I shouldn't have said that. Let, let's talk. Let's make up. Let, let's shake hands. Because <laughs> that check is on the line. <laughs> Giselle doesn't have any other streams of income. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. At least if Karen leaves the show, she has Ray. She has La, La Dame fragrances and candles. 
So Karen will be good. Karen could take her LaDom act on the road if they were to boot her off the cast. Wendy has her book. She's still, you know, I, is she's, wait, it, quick question. Is Wendy still at Johns Hopkins as a professor or is she no longer a professor? But I'm sure that Wendy could go back to being a professor if she did leave the show or she if she did get fired. But Wendy has multiple income streams. Eddie's a lawyer. He also has Happy Eddie. She has her YouTube, she has her talk show on YouTube, which is doing well. So Wendy will be good if they were to ask her. Candace is good. Giselle and Robin is even doing better financially because Robin, well, even though she has Juan who's not working, but Robin has her hat line that's still selling. She's about to have the franchise Glow 30. Giselle's the only one who only, she just has this, her and Ashley, they need this check. Oh, she's still there at Johns Hopkins. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. Political commentator. Yes. Okay, good. She's still up there. Her profile is up on the school website. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, I'm so sorry you didn't get a notification. That's so weird. Do you um make sure that you um hit the little bell to make sure that you get notifications to my videos and lives? Because the little bell will tell you every time I go live or post something, a new video or um a, a post on the community tab. Make sure to hit that little bell. Well, see, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah, they listen, everybody on this cast, for the most part, they have multiple streams of income except for Giselle and Ashley. And Mia. Mia doesn't have anything outside this show. That's why Mia's so desperate. Well, I guess she's dating that new guy who has some money, but you can't, you can't depend on that. What if they break up? So... Yeah, you have the three folks who are in desperate need where everybody else will be fine if they let, are let go tomorrow. Candace is on TV. She's in movies. She has a tour out at City Winery. She's doing, she's booked. Yep. <laughs> Not that invisible inheritance. <laughs> this show isn't big enough to not have several streams of income. I agree. I agree. I mean, yes, Housewives is lucrative, but the Housewives wave is not as popular as it used to be. Like, let's be honest. In its heyday, that was like 10 years ago when they were at their peak. But now the Housewives have been on a steady decline. So you really can't rest your laurels on just this show like you used to. You need to have multiple things in the pot. You need to be investing your money. You need to be, you know, making your money work for you. They need the Bravo money. Oh, they sure do. They absolutely do. And I do want to talk about quiet on the set. Have you guys been watching that new documentary about for all my nineties kids? Did y'all, are y'all watching it on HBO max? When I tell you, I feel like my childhood has been destroyed watching this documentary. I'm sitting, I'm sitting over here sobbing. Dan Schneider needs to be in jail. What he did to Amanda Bynes and Drake Bell, it is it's sick. It's very sick. And another reason why I think that it never works when you have parents, grown adults, depending on their children to carry the family financially. That is your job as a parent. And this is what happens because you have parents turning a blind eye to things or they don't they feel like they don't have the power to speak up about their kid being I can't say certain words on here because YouTube gets a little bit weird, but when kids are being mishandled, you have parents who feel like they can't say anything because they're they're resting all their they're putting all their hopes and dreams on their kid to get them out the hood. So when you're in a position where you're dependent on your kid making money so that you guys can eat, you you don't have an issue with saying, oh, you know, don't do that to my kid. Like how, you know, that's not right. It is very, it's, it's very sad. Please watch it, y'all. It is, it's, it's horrifying, horrifying what was happening. Hor I can't even say half the stuff because YouTube will flag it so badly, but horrible. And the, the little kids, d absolutely disgusting. Hey, Miss Maine. 
Hey, Miss Main Tips. Thank you for the super chat. It's sad, especially hearing from Zach's father. Yes, it's very sad. It's so gross that you had grown adults preying on kids. And now just thinking about some of the shows, I remember watching Victorious where Ariana Grande got her start. And those scenes where they would always have like those, like the foot fetishes and all that stuff when like she was playing with her feet in that one scene. I don't know. I didn't, I never, I never realized why that scene kind of grossed me out. And then to know that this grown man is making kids do this on camera because he has a fetish, like that's disgusting. That's so sick to me. And the fact that nobody at Nickelodeon thought that that was strange. And now it makes sense why they were Nickelodeon was always doing those like slime shots because it was supposed to be, you know what I'm saying? I can't say it, but you know what I'm saying? Just sick. Please, y'all, watch, watch the documentary. It's four episodes on HBO Max. Your whole childhood is going to be blown because it's all your favorite episodes of All That, The Amanda Show. Um, I mean, just it's mind boggling, absolutely mind boggling what these kids were subjected to. And that's why they've gone off the deep end because of predators. And it's sad. I really hope that everybody involved is in jail. I hope that Dan Schneider is in jail because that man is disgusting. And the fact that he's been able to walk free for so long is sick. Yeah, it just came out. It's on it's on HBO Max. It just it was released like a few days ago. Please go and watch it, y'all. I mean, my mind is just blown watching this. It's sad. Because you have, and um, you know, you had the black actors and actresses talking about their time on all that and how Dan had his favorites, how he mistreated them. You know, just the stories about how Amanda Bynes was like nine or 10 years old and she's giving this grown man back rubs on set. All I'm gonna say is be prepared to be emotional because it ruins all your memories of your favorite shows. I mean, you know, all that Keenan and Kel, um, every show, the, the Amanda show, like all, all of our favorite shows just completely ruined. As kids, we didn't pay attention to the weird things. Of, yeah. Like, mm -mm. you don't think about it. You're just a kid, but there were some scenes in some episodes where you did feel like, Something about this does not feel right. You know, you would just get that weird feeling like what I'm watching right now feels like I shouldn't be watching this, but you don't want to feel like you're crazy because you're only like nine or 10 and you're like, it's a kid's show, obviously, you know? And when you were young, you didn't know about adult content. You didn't know about Cornhub and all that stuff, right? So you don't know why you feel like, why does this feel kind of reminiscent to something that I shouldn't be even knowing about? And then you realize, oh my gosh, that's what he was trying to recreate on these shows. I don't believe that nobody knew. Keep, no, keep watching. Keep watching. I think that a lot of people knew because um, even the writers, they the, the female writers that he had, and he was like, you know, they said that Dan Schneider hated women and how he was paying the women writers. Um, he was paying them like they had to share a salary, like crazy stuff like that. The way he was tormenting them because they were women, the, the only women in the writer's room. Disgusting. He's a disgusting man. Yeah, they knew because they questioned it. Yeah, exactly. I never got into the sketch shows. They were always weird to me. Yeah, you, yeah, and it's so sad because you can't watch these same shows. This you can't watch these shows the same. Even if you wanted to, you know, go on Netflix or maybe go on Hulu or Discovery or Paramount Plus and watch your favorite shows, you can't even watch them. It's ruined now because we know what, what we know what this creep was up to when he was filming the shows, and then finding out that he was trying to incorporate all the jokes as something really nasty with it. Like just y'all, I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it, but please watch it. Your mind's going to be blown. What happened to those kids 
extremely heartbreaking. And I really hope that after this documentary, everybody watches it. I really hope that Dan Schneider is put in jail because this man is a disgusting and horrific man and borderline R. Kelly, and he needs to be in jail. And it's so sad that parents were so worried about collecting a check that they didn't trust their own intuition and just say, no, this ain't, this isn't right. You're not going to do this to my kid. It's just sad. Yeah. I hope he goes to jail too. Disney needs to be watched because of Brian Peck and his history. Yeah. They, yep. They all need to be watched. They all knew and run in the same circles. If folks truly cared, all the creeps in that industry would be known by name, address, and hidden stories. Yes, I agree. I agree. Yeah, I was a Nickelodeon kid too. Yeah, it breaks my heart to hear this. Oh, wow. Growing up, I actually wanted to be on Nickelodeon. My parents said no every time I pestered them to let me audition for shows. Thank God. Yeah, sometimes. No, it's so true. No, not sometimes, all the time. Anytime you get rejected from something, you need to thank God. Rejection is God's protection. Never be upset if something doesn't work out, if you don't get that job, if that person that you want doesn't want you. God is protecting you and saving you from something. So do not be upset. I don't care if you think that this opportunity is so great. And oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't get that. There's something better out there. God sees something that God sees something that you don't see and he's protecting you from it. That's why you didn't get it. So that's that's a blessing that your parents were like, no, you don't need to audition for Nickelodeon because you Lord knows what would have happened. So that one lady in the story, the one mom in the story who told um, about her daughter, how her daughter bugged her to be on the show. And she was on um, the Amanda Bynes show for a few episodes. And look what happened to her. So, yeah, it, that's a blessing that your parents were like, no, we'll pass on that. Yes, even though we get mad about what we want, it's for, it's for good. Yeah, it's good for us not to. It's true. Yes, there is always better for you. It's so true. Always. Listen, rejection is God's protection. Do, do not ever get upset because you feel like you lost out. You didn't lose out on anything. Remember, what's meant for you will never miss you. And what's for you will never, you know, what's for you will never miss you. So if it's, if it didn't come to you, it wasn't for you. Be happy and move on and know that something greater is coming. Hey, Glammed Up. Thank you for the super chat. Happy you are back and doing well, Brooke. Looking beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Glammed Up. I appreciate that. I'm happy you're here. Thank you. I feel a lot better. I'm just drinking seltzer water, guys. Nothing, nothing spicy tonight. Just some seltzer water. No, it's so true. God is always in control. Truly, truly. I hope they do a second season and look into Disney Channel. Yeah, look into all, look into every network that involved a whole bunch of child stars. I know that everybody has a story. That whole environment fosters a lot of predatory behavior. You know, you have kids working long hours, like they're adults. The, it's just an imbalance. I'm pretty sure that a lot of these Disney stars have a lot of stories as well. So, I yeah, I mean, guys, again, if you have the stomach for it, if you are ready, I guess, to be upset at how your childhood is going to be like dismantled in front of you, I would suggest that you watch the documentary. That first episode, they dive right into it. There's no fluff. There's no sugarcoating anything. They dive right into everything. Where are the laws? I mean, you know what it is when there's money to be made, when people are making this, all of a sudden people turn a blind eye to the laws. It, it, it's sad. A lot of stuff isn't enforced, which is terrible. They talk about that, how some rules were bent just because. And it just shows you that when money is in the picture, everybody's morals go out the window. People allow people to do certain things. And it was like Dan Schneider, he was the king of Nickelodeon and people were too afraid to call him out. But it's also, that's why they always say that absolute power corrupts because when you have nobody there to check you, that's when crazy things happen. And this man was crazy.
He did whatever he wanted to people, to anybody, and there were no consequences. Yeah, he thought that he was untouchable. Yeah, he, he sure did. I wanted to know why was, oh my gosh, I know. Listen, I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it, so I won't say too much more. But yeah, a great documentary. My heart really goes out to all the kids and their parents. Um, there was one story in particular that really had me choked up. It was about uh, one of the young men who had, remember, do you remember that, do you remember that episode on Nickelodeon? It was like that dare, that dare show. I never really cared for it, but I always remembered it. It was when they had put him, they had dipped him all in peanut butter and they had the dogs and cats come and lick him. And that never sat right with me. And hearing him on the documentary, he's talking about that. I was just like, oh my gosh. And you think about what that did to you, what that would do to you psychologically. And then knowing as a kid that something's not right about this, this feels very oddly. And again, I don't want to say the words, but it just felt, it didn't feel right. Cause I'm like, what, why do they have these, why is he dipped in peanut butter? It just, just some very freaky stuff. People are very depraved and it shows what a depraved mind this man had disgusting yeah he said and he said he said i don't like this and his mom was even saying i don't like this but his mom was too afraid to say anything yeah, very sinister extremely sinister there are so many scenes that always fell off yeah no it's so true watching them as a kid there was that feel feeling of this doesn't feel right, but you don't, you can't explain why it doesn't feel right to you. And then now you're older, you're like, oh my gosh, that was supposed to be like what you see in an, in an adult movie. It was supposed to be like that. And you're recreating that with kids. D sick. Sick. Oh, I know that uh, Jamie Lynn Spears has, she has secrets for days. Yes, I, Carly, and Victoria's. Those were definitely the most sexual charged, sexually charged shows because Victoria's, they were always pulling it. Always. Oh, always. They were always adding some, it was, it was always some little freaky, freaky stuff in all the jokes, especially with Ariana Grande's character. That foot scene, that was disturbing. And when they showed that in the documentary and what went on about, and everybody was kind of like, wait, what? Like, we're, we're actually going to put this on the show? And they were like, okay, well, Dan approved it. So here we go. That stuff like, that stuff, stuff right there is the reason why I feel like everybody needs to be in trouble because why would the other executives allow Dan to get away with that? Somebody should have said, oh no, we're not airing that. Like this man is a predator. We're not, we're not doing this. Like what's going on? That's disgusting. The name of the documentary is Quiet On Set. It's on HBO Max. Please watch it, y'all. Oh, I, yeah, I think that Ariana Grande has loads of stories. Now, I don't know if she would ever comment on them. I don't know. But I know that if she does... She has, she, she'll probably blow the roof off of Nickelodeon. She probably owned Nickelodeon. I'm, sh I'm sure. Cause Victorious was very sexual. That was, yeah, that was a, that show was very like, I was like, oh, okay. Like we're doing this. Like what? Yes. In every episode, there was a dirty joke. Every single, every single episode that show. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow, I think that back, wow, Avon. Yes, I remember him from Victoria said he was drunk a lot of times on set. Oh, that's sad. Yes, please ask your daughters about it. If if your daughters watched Victoria's, they, they need to watch the documentary because Victoria's was definitely, I think, the freakiest out of all the shows. Oh, damn. Jeanette McCurdy, McCurdy alluded in her book that Ariana took. Wow. They offered it to Jeanette, but she declined. Yes, if you have Discovery Plus, it's on there as well. Yes, HBO Max and Discovery Plus. 
Yeah, she probably won't say anything, seeing how she's in the music industry, which has a ton of creeps, too. One of the girls from Victorious got married to a crew member who she started dating when she was 16 and he was in his 30s. Oh, my gosh. See, see, everybody needs to be in jail, like everybody, because Nickelodeon was a wild place. But, yeah, the, the iCarly... And Victoria's, those were my shows, but there were some times where I always felt like they had the most sexual innuendos, especially when they were always forced to eat pickles. It was just, there was always some weird stuff going on. It was always, there was always that, you would just always feel that they were trying to talk about something else in between those jokes. And especially with, um, I, um, what was her name? Carly's older brother, Spencer. There were always, it was always some sexual innuendo all the time. Yeah, but y'all watch the documentary. It's, it's going to blow, it's going to blow your wig back. That's all I got to say about that. You're going to feel very traumatized for the kids. You're going to feel upset for yourself because it feels like a piece of your childhood has now been stolen because of what was happening behind the scenes. And it, it unlocked memories of episodes that I forgot about. I was like, oh my gosh, I remember that episode of all that. They were talking about all the sexual innuendos and all that. And there was one skit in particular that I had forgotten about. And when they showed it, I was like, oh my gosh. And I remember thinking with that skit, I feel like this is kind of weird. And then seeing it now and seeing that he was incorporating some freaky stuff in that skit. I'm like, oh my gosh, no wonder I felt weird watching that when I was little. It was it's, it's troubling, y'all, but a very good documentary. I haven't finished the whole entire thing yet, but I plan on watching the rest probably when I get off this live. Hey, DM Rocks, thank you for the super chat. Hey, the fact that Josh Peck is defending Dan and Media too. Are you serious? It has to be Stockholm Syndrome. That's the only thing I could think of. There's no way that he thinks that what Dan Schneider did is acceptable. Dan Schneider is a predator and he needs to be in the jail. But I guess some people have Stockholm syndrome. They think that, you know, that, that it's fine. He was a child star. You know, he was on, he was, he's been on TV since he was like 10 or 11. So he probably doesn't know any better. I never watched the shows, but I had seen my cousins watch it. Red flags went up instantly when I'd catch a glimpse of a show. My mom called it out about the feet jokes. I swore she was crazy at the time. Oh, and mama was right. Go and call your mom up and no, tell your mom, mom, you were right. The do tell her to watch the documentary. Say, mom, you were right. <laughs> See, mama knows. She was looking like, excuse me? <laughs> Drake Bell said Josh reached out to him. Wait, no, Drake Bell said that he spoke to Josh and he's praying for, okay, he's praying for his healing. Oh, okay. I think Dan put out a response about the documentary, but I feel like it's going to be BS. Oh, it is going to be BS because Dan knows that the feds are going to be looking at him and knocking on his door to send him to jail. Yeah, there are so many high up people who are predators. They have, they're depraved, depraved minds. Okay, I saw that clip of that black man with the locks from iCarly sat down and did a 20 minute interview. I saw that, I scrolled right by that. I thought that was fake. So that's real? He really sat down with Dan Schneider to have an interview? And what is Dan saying in that interview? He's talking about he's innocent. He needs to be locked away in a jail cell. I don't know why, why how he's walking free. He needs to be in jail. Hey, Iomidi. Akinikun, did I say your name right? Please let me know if I butchered it. I hope I said it right. You have a beautiful name, by the way. People using this to credit spiritual parents who saw the demon in the TV. No, haha. -ha. I'll credit I'll credit discerning parents, though. Yes, no. Listen, parents know. Parents know. They just have a sixth sense about things. They know that something is not quite right. It's true. And thank you again for the super chat. He has a lot of, he said he has a lot of apologies to make. He said a whole bunch of nothing. I wouldn't take money over my peace of mind. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You can't enjoy money if you don't have peace of mind. You can't enjoy money if you don't have your health. 
that's why you shouldn't be prioritizing money over everything. Yes, money's great. It makes your life easier. You do need money. We all need money. But if you don't have peace of mind or your health, then what good is the money? You can't even enjoy it. And then you have... In this case, people who got money and now they have a whole bunch of issues now because what was done to them, their whole their lives are messed up, childhoods, their childhoods were taken away from them. It is extremely, it's very unsettling. Okay, yes, I wanted to make sure I got your name right. I'm so glad I did. Yes, I remember you. I remember you. You've been on a lot of my lives. Thank you again for the super chat. No, it's true, y'all. It's true. If you don't have peace of mind, then the money will be no good. Damn, let the cast of Zoe 101, Zoe 101, bully the girl who was also a cast member on the show. Was it the girl with the glasses? Who? What was her name? Was it like, um, it was like Jane or something or Sarah on the show? She was bullied, I remember. I remember watching a video or a TikTok of her saying that she was bullied. Jamie Lynn Spears bullied her. Everybody bullied her on the set. She had a miserable time. Hey, Brooke, watching from the UK. Oh, hey, I'm happy you're... Oh, it must be late over there. It must be, what, two in the morning? I'm. Ha oh, I, I feel honored that you're up. Dan also sabotaged Victoria's music career. She recorded an entire album 11 years ago that never got released. Yeah, I always felt like Victoria Justice should have had a bigger career. They definitely set her up to have a big career and it never panned out. And I always wondered why, but now seeing the documentary, I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised if he had a hand in messing her up. And I want to see, um, I want, I, I, I would be, I'd be curious to see what Victoria Justice has to say too about this and Dan Schneider, because she was the star of Victoria's. And again, Victorious was a very, that was the freakiest of all the Nickelodeon shows. So I'm dying to hear her thoughts. Okay, her name was Quinn. Yes, it was Quinn. Thank you. Hey, Mega Jess, thank you for the super chat. Hi, Brooke, I love your channel. You are a true beauty. Oh, thank you so much. Regal, elegant, and witty. Thank you. You're so sweet. The full package. R random, but where do you like to shop? I absolutely adore your style. Take care, hon. Oh, thank you. I love Bloomingdale's. I love Nordstrom. I love Aritzia. I like for clothes and like sexy tops and um, like dresses and all that stuff. Those are like my top three. And then for shoes, I love, I love a good Christian. I love a good, you know, Christian Louboutin shoe, honey. Okay. <laughs> But thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That's very sweet. It was Alexa Nicholas who played Nicole, the boy crazy roommate, not Quinn. Quinn was the girl with the glasses. Oh, okay. Thank you. But she was the one who was bullied by Dan and everybody on the set, right? Yes, I, I'm a Neiman's and Saks girl. I love, I love that. I, I'm also, I'm a Bergdorf Goodman girl too, okay? <laughs> yes, Aritzia is, oh my gosh, you can always find a sexy piece from Aritzia. Always, 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 always. And Bloomingdale's and the majority of my blouses that you see me wear on camera, they're from Nordstrom and um, Bloomingdale's. Like this sweater is from Nordstrom. And this top is, at, this tank top is from Aritzia. Child, you know, I'm a little, yeah, I, I'm, I'm bougie. <laughs> I don't think, do we have, I don't know if we have an Akira in New York. I, if they do, I'll check it out. We don't have Nordstrom. Oh, you live in Canada. Oh, Okay. May I've I have not been I have not shopped at Mango. I've Mango has some really cute pieces though. I want I'll check them out. 
Well, yeah, I think that Disney needs to be next. Let I we need to investigate every single network that had a whole bunch of child stars. Period. The end. Because it was a whole lot of stuff going on, and a lot of these kids were mistreated, to say the least. A lot of these kids were in positions that they should not have been in. There is no excuse to why you have a nine-year-old girl giving a grown man a back massage on set. What happened to Amanda Bynes is criminal and everybody needs to be under jail, including her father. Because her father, he didn't care. He just wanted her to get the check. Very sad. You, When you have stage parents who are depending on their kids for their living and you have depraved people in the industry, it's a recipe for disaster. And on that note, y'all, I'm going to end the live right here. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope y'all had a good time. I have fun with y'all. Just wanted to get on here and show my face and show y'all that I missed you guys. I miss chopping it up with y'all. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, the name of the documentary is called Quiet On Set. It's on HBO Max and Discovery Plus. So check it out. And on the next live, we'll talk about it even more because I'm sure that more of you guys would, will see it. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat, Iomedy. Thank you. Rug, different to topic, but I love watching your videos because I'd be having real reactions to reality TV stars. It reflects reality. Like if you stand Giselle, it might be giving morally corrupt. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, I have a side eye for people who stand for certain people. I'm like, what does it say about you and your character? Because the math ain't math. And you go up for this in real life. I, we're right here. But y'all, I love you guys. Have a wonderful night. And I will catch you all for the next live. I have Married to Medicine coming up for you guys. It'll either be up tomorrow. If not tomorrow, it'll be up on Friday. Okay? But I love y'all. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope you guys have fun. Bye, guys.